on a second. Let's just talk about what it took us to get to this point right here. So when we initially moved into the house, this was in fact my man cave or game room. But then we had our son and my wife kicked me out into the garage and this became his room, as you can see. First thing I had to do was remove the very cute but totally lame child paraphernalia that my wife made me put up, including wallpaper, special decals, and a crib. I then moved on to painting the walls. I first tried to actually spray paint the creases to save myself some time, but that was a huge mistake, never do that. I have three kids, two dogs, and a wife, so at this point I've painted my fair share of rooms and done this process multiple times, but never cut corners, life lesson. I then moved on to the wicker ceiling fixture that had to go and put in an RGB light, which was super cool. The wall unit was actually the most difficult. Never do that, ever. And the last major thing to be moved in is actually the safe itself. And I wanted to save that thing for last because it weighs like 600 pounds. But I figured this is where I would stop because the rest is aesthetic and I can show you in real time. But now what I'm gonna do is walk around, show you guys some of the stuff that is in the room that you can't really see on camera a lot of times. and. I just want to go on record before I show you guys all this that none of this would be possible without you. And that never escapes me. And I know I say it a lot, but I really mean it. And being able to just be in this position in life and just with this room and everything that it means to me is so incredibly important. And I just don't want that to get lost in the sauce uh, when it comes to the channel and, and me and our relationship you guys watching and me creating. I just can't appreciate you guys any more than I already do. So this is kind of like the entry uh, or this leads to my house. Uh, I kind of repositioned stuff a lot where it was before. The room looks completely different than when you know I had it as a man cave, but I had a definite wall of slabs right here. I think I may have had two stories. I can't remember exactly, it was like three years ago, but I know that I had slabs right here, so I, I know that's what I wanted to use this space for. So like, yeah, when you come in, it's kind of like slab alley, which is exactly what I wanted. And of course, everyone has their shrine to the fire lizard. So I had, you know, I'm no different, I have my own, but those aren't the only kinds of cards that I'm into or the only Pokemon. I uh, got some got some gold stars, some shinies from Neo Destiny, base set of course, jungle, and there's a lot of cards that are still in the in the vault that I can't display. Uh, I just haven't hung those cases, and I don't know if I want to do that in this room uh, and completely clutter it because, like I said, it's different now. Uh, before I didn't have this whole setup, so I had all that wall for slabs, and that's not going to be the case this time. So, so yeah, but a couple of cool cards. That is a really cool card. That is a no symbol Snorlax from Jungle in a PSA 10. Really cool card. Uh, yeah, just, I mean, some other guys. I have a thing for Scyther, little known fact. Uh, it's one of my favorite artworks. It's one of the first hollows that I ever pulled as a youngster. It's not the first, but it's one of the first. Uh, and it was important to me because Jungle was more expensive than Fossil when I was a kid. So, you know, my mom, it was, it was a treat to get Jungle. I usually got Fossil, because uh, Fossil was the poor man's jungle. Uh, but it was, you know, that was a treat. And that was like the first haul that I pulled out of Jungle. So that one sticks out at me. Uh, same thing with Flareon. And then this wall, you know, you guys have seen all these cards. You've seen them. You've seen them in life. You've seen them in my collection. So then moving over here, you will see a couple trophies. Your boy was a baseball player. We won't get into that. It's not about baseball. It's about Pokemon. But this is a lot of stuff from my early childhood. These are Kenner toys from the real Ghostbusters. Uh, one of my favorite, probably my favorite movie, believe it or not, is Ghostbusters. It is just something that's ingrained uh, in my life, soul, everything from when I was a kid. So uh, these are the toys I used to play with as a kid. Uh, you know, my, I have one of those moms that still looks at me like I'm an eight-year-old. And every time that I, she sees these or I show her this, she goes, I love you when you were a kid. Oh my God. Uh, these are a lot of the ones that I... Didn't have for my childhood, maybe a few figures, but I equipped them with the proper stuff. Uh, but I do have a few figures from my childhood, not all of them. I went back and repur repurchased them. This is another rack that's like super important to me. Uh, this this guy right here, this Batman. So the first Batman with Mike, Michael Keaton came out when I was a kid. I'm probably aging myself, but that's okay. That was one of my favorite toys in the entire world. So that's why I have that. Along with the Ninja Turtles, I'm sure a lot of you guys watching. Oh, a fellow 
chucker, eh? Have had these also, but uh, but yeah, you know, just some stuff from my childhood. And then there's Exo Squad. Man, is this just a lost, lost cartoon and you know, just toy line? I loved Exo Squad. Okay. This guy right here, he was the leader, right? I mean, I just, I just loved the cartoon. I loved watching it every morning. It was on like the Saturday morning lineup. And then I love playing with the toys. I had that plane as a kid. That's not my same plane from when I was a kid. But some dude online in 2014, 2015 was selling this entire lot and I bought it for like 80 bucks shipped. How you beat that, I don't know. I scooped it up and I have to give props where props are deserved. Because if it wasn't for me getting back into my childhood of toys, I would have never made my way back to Pokemon. And that's a true story. So it's actually this that led to that. Well, this and video games. I got back into collecting NES and Super Nintendo, and that led me back into Pokemon, which is kind of a funny story. So moving along, you'll see more slabs. I mean, just so much eye candy. If you can't tell already, I have a thing for graded cards. That's just, I guess, I guess that's the whole thing of the, the channel too, right? You know, I keep my slabs in my vault. I don't know, but that's where I would keep my my excess slabs was in a gun safe. It just seemed like the, the most natural thing to do. I don't know. But over here, you got vault corner, okay? This is stuff that's important to me from the channel, important to me personally. I have a little diorama, some stuff that uh, that some viewers of the channel sent me. So someone made this, 3D printed, pretty dope. Uh, but a lot of this stuff is things that people sent me from the channel, like this diorama of Rayquaza. This comes from a Hidden Fates diorama set, which I actually have sealed, but someone sent me that, you know? Uh, family first, never forget. But yeah, this is kind of like, I, I wanted to do like a little side little side deal, a little shrine where, where I keep things that, that fans sent me. Pat with Deep Pocket Monster sent me this, okay? If you guys remember that episode, I uh, posted about a month ago. I think we both know how important it is that this is more than just about cards. It's about the community, especially when you find a friend and a partner who lifts you up, who supports you, who's real with you. And uh, I definitely feel that with, with you, my friend. And I uh, look Facts. forward to more adventures and more challenges with you. And I look forward to working with you and seeing you at Card Party. Hopefully, Bolt Squad will see some of you there too. But he sent me a mystery box. I mean, this is stuff that I could never part with. The, in here, there's gonna be cards that have been sent to me from fans. There's, there's a binder of that, but then these are my personal binders. This is like my own personal little corner where I keep things that are super, super sentimental to me. This corner is probably way more important to me than a lot of stuff uh, that's, you know, that's in the rest of the room, just saying. Okay, so moving on, uh, I have a thing for blisters. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say, but I there's something about blisters that just, it just speaks to me, you know? I don't know how to really phrase that into words, but it's almost like you can get these different artworks in and you don't have to pay an arm and a leg to get them and you get a I, I don't know you get what you get what i'm saying i got a thing for blisters i got a thing for blisters okay so these are some older blisters that are up here uh some dragon ball this i haven't confirmed it yet i think i need to send this to ryan fusion strike fusion strike uh and ask him if this has been tampered with because after seeing a few episodes, I bought this in 2015. I'm pretty sure this should have a Crystal Guardians pack in it. And that really, really bothers me, but that's okay. You know, whatever it is, people used to do that all the time. It almost looks resealed, which is so unfortunate. It should not have two Power Keepers packs in there, but I realized that like freaking two weeks ago. But moving over here, you have the jewels of my slab collection. These aren't necessarily my most favorite, we'll say, but they're definitely uh, some heavy hitters when it comes to value and stuff like that. So I wanted to have a place where I could display that. These boxes are just kind of there really for show. At any moment, they could get broken on the channel for a lie break. So uh, they're not really sentimental to me that way. I don't collect boxes the way that I collect slabs. So, you know, certain people like to collect sealed stuff. I like to collect slabs, like all this stuff that you're seeing down here. Number one, definitely not hoarding it under any circumstances. Number two, it will be opened at some point. Uh, I don't care what it is, uh, but it's to feed the live breaks. And I just keep it close to me because a lot of times I, you know, will do a live break and I'll just kind of decide on the fly what I'm breaking and anything sealed is up for grabs. These, there should be another one over here. Okay, but there's not, there should be another one over there. But my, my kids, come in and steal 
these Pokemon balls, of all the things, you got thousands of dollars worth of slabs, and the kids come in for the Pokeballs, but that's that's what uh, that's what kids are for. That's why I love them. Okay, so up here, this is a really cool thing. This is a Diamond Select diorama of the final scene of Ghostbusters 1. Girl. You do have the Ultra Ball up there. This is ultra cool. <laughs> Dad jokes. But yeah, this is out of a di out of the. I think it's called Diamond Select. If I'm not mistaken, that's what these figures come in. And you have to buy like 14 figures, and I collected them over time years ago, so I could build a diorama. And they would give you like a little piece, like each little each little piece. You had to buy. You get this guy and this piece. You know what I'm saying? And you had to like build it. This thing was a freaking labor of love. But that's the vault. You guys have seen that multiple times over. It looks different for sure. Over here, you kind of have a little corner and my box light of sealed boxes from my childhood. Like this thing's from my childhood, which is crazy. My grandfather held on to certain things, which was absolutely nuts. That's not, that is, uh, these, that is, these two are not, the Batmans are not. Uh, this is not my original firehouse, which is unfortunate. I went, I went back and bought that. Uh, but this is something that I played with as a kid and this would and as a when I was a kid This would have looked a lot different. They used to give you slime that would go down and it would like dump onto the things below Ghostbusters! It's the real Ghostbusters firehouse playset. Megment, our firehouse is haunted. No way. Oh No, I've been good. Ding, ding, Ghost ding, to ding, the ding, stadium. The real Ghostbusters each sold separately ah. assembly required. I definitely was the kid that threw slime down there. So mine would never have been this clean. Another thing, Kenner, I know you're out of business by now, probably, I have no idea, but how do you make the firehouse where the freaking Ecto doesn't fit? Come on, you gotta be better. You gotta do better than that. I'm sure also people wonder, how does this dude dancing in a green screen in such a small room? Well, this is how. This is my camera and this is pointing over here and you can't really tell you like, wait, what? What's going on here? So this is something that I put together and it's similar to what I had in the garage, but it is a foldable or erectable <laughs> green screen that I can put up when I'm live, when I'm live streaming. And yeah, and that's the camera that captures me. And then I jump on a live stream and start dancing for you guys like an idiot. It's here. You see, you see? So over here, I do a lot of my uh, editing right there. This is for my other job. I do have another job. So I spend a lot of time right there. Uh, but yeah, I love what I do in my other job. So I wouldn't change that. You got the label printer right here. Always pr That thing sees more action than anything or anyone in this house because you guys are amazing to me. And I'm always printing out something that you purchased or some break that we've done. Uh, just some slabs that I'm that I'm making a trade with, or at least trying to at the moment. That is gonna be on an episode. And then here we go. This is the epitome of my channel and really what's capable in terms of leveling up as a human being. So I know that sounds cryptic, but if you would have seen me in my first live event, some of you have. Guys, what is up? Oh my gosh. If you know where I've came from to where I am now, this is literally the end result and really beginning point of the next chapter of my life all encompassed in one spot. This means everything to me. If you would have tried to get me to hook this up two years ago, you would have had a better chance to fit a golf ball through a garden hose, okay? It wouldn't have been possible. So this is my main screen. This is where the majority, the hub of what's going on is going on. Then over here, this is where, this is my screen share screen. So I can bring you guys over here and show you stuff. I have live chat that's rolling right up here. That's my face cam. So that's how you see what's going on behind me. Now we're all, now we're getting it, right? And then this is my card cam right here. Microphone, obviously. But yeah, I'm set up to uh, film an episode. So this is gonna be, this box is fake and it's gonna be in an episode coming up here pretty soon. So we're gonna see me open this and see what's inside. At least I think it's fake. I'm like 98.37% sure it's fake. But yeah, uh, wristbands, glasses. Only person probably in the United States that has a wristband and retro glasses holder on his desk. So uh, you get the stream deck, of course, and then you have the PC, which is a custom that I built, or at least I helped build 
uh, with some, you know, with some useful advice. And of course we gotta, you know, we gotta decal it out with the squad. One thing I do wanna mention that I did not take really seriously originally was my wire maintenance. I know that sounds so ridiculous, but this is still even a thousand times better than what it was. My old wires were, it looked like a criminal scene or like a detective that's been following a dude for like seven years and he lives in an apartment building, left his wife the whole deal and he's like in his apartment. That's what that's what my wires look like. It was crazy. Got the headphones. Yeah. But yeah, this is, this is it, man. This is the command center. This is what it looks like. This is what I'm looking at when you're looking at me during the live events. So pretty cool. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for me for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. And like I said in the intro or in the beginning, I could not be doing this without you guys. And I am so, so appreciative to even be in this position. And I want you guys to know that and just know that I appreciate each and every one of you for watching my videos and for supporting me on this journey. And you'll always have a seat at my table as long as you wanna eat. I will see you guys on the next live or the next episode. Peace. Yeah, I'm talking to you. It's time to hit the button already. Do it now. What do you think, I'm dancing for free here?